This WBTV High Definition Program is sponsored by Honda Dealers of the Carolinas. WBTV News at 530 starts right now. 150 arrests, more than 100 children found safe in a nationwide sex trafficking sting. Tonight, we learn three suspects and a young victim are from Charlotte. But first, the cleanup continues in three counties. We have new video of some of the worst damage from this weekend's major storms. Good evening and welcome. I'm Molly Grantham. And I'm Jamie Bolt. Glad you're with us. Now at 530, we're taking you to Lincoln County where the rain and floods, they're taking a toll. No question about it. In some places, roads are washed out and people are finding themselves in dangerous situations. WBTV's Kay Johnson live tonight in Lincoln County. Kay, how long will it take before some of these roads are repaired? Well, Jamie, it's unclear just how long DOT crews, I'm told, are out assessing the damage today. And so county officials hope to have a better timeline later on. But it's not just these roads that we are talking about. We are also talking about damage to personal property. This is Dane, Dwayne Crawley's parents' home. When the creek here spilled over its banks, it wiped out five to 600 feet of fencing. The family has cattle and donkeys here. Crawley told me that he has no, he had no idea that the, the flood was going to be this bad, never seen so much water. At one point, he tells me his own horses at his home, about 10 miles from here, were knee deep in water. And the force of those floodwaters, listen to how Crawley describes it. We had two hay wagons close to the creek and it washed them about 500 feet down the creek and they're now upside down in the fence and up into the trees. Crawley says that it could be uh, three to four weeks before all this fencing is back up. As for this road, Crawley says that he has seen drivers driving around these barriers, something that emergency crews really warn against. But it's not only that that is dangerous. When I met Crawley, he was actually pulling out a truck that was stuck in the ground here because it is so saturated. In Lincoln County, Kay Johnson, WBTV, on your side. Kay, thank you. Now, much of the same issues right now going on in Gaston County. About a dozen roads remain closed due to flooding. Water receded down the Catawba River. Some of the worst flooding, though, in Cramerton. The town's fire headquarters on 8th Avenue was flooded, despite firefighters placing sandbags in front of the building. It sounds unbelievable, but nine inches of rain in two and a half hours on Saturday, all at Rock Barn Golf and Spa. That's one of the area's most popular golf courses. Sky 3 flew over Rock Barn today. Course officials say the greens on holes 3 and 5 are destroyed. They say they'll be closed until the repairs are done. Greens and fairways on five other holes were submerged. Officials say they hope all 18 holes will be in top shape in time for the Greater Hickory Classic of the senior PGA mm. Tour event in mid-October. Well, they have a lot of work ahead of them here. Thankfully, today we are getting a break. Some sunshine, dry weather. That's important. We need that. Mm -hmm. We really do. Ashley Beatty's in the First Lord Weather Center with our forecast. Ashley. Yeah, Molly, we could definitely use a few days to dry Wednesday. things out. We're already tracking our first of several rain chances coming up in our seven-day forecast, and I'll have more details on that coming up in just a few minutes. Ashley, thank you. In 10 minutes, Ashley going to be back to tell us uh, how much rain we have seen over the past few months. Also, she shows us what could happen if heavy rains from a tropical storm or hurricane were to hit our area. Also, remember to download the free WBTV weather app for the iPhone and Android. And if you have it already, be sure to update the app to get real-time traffic information. Speaking of, let's go ahead and get a check of traffic with Katie Garner. Katie. All right, Molly, thanks. Well, traffic issues well, beginning with interstates and highways. I-85 at Sugar Creek Road looks just fine right now. Jamie. All right, Katie, thank you. Some breaking news we're following right now here on WBTV. It comes out of Cornelius, where right now police are telling us they are assisting with a traffic backup. This because of a gas line break on Catawba Avenue near Old Jaton. Sky 3 in route right now, working to gather you new information. But again, we are hearing about a gas line break on Catawba Avenue. We're watching that story very closely. As soon as we get new information, of course, we'll have it for you right here on WBTV. Molly? And Jamie, new information at 530 on arrests and a major prostitution sting. 150 50 people, all described as pimps, were arrested in 76 cities across the U.S. Three of those 76 were arrested here in Charlotte. One child from our area was among the more than 100 across the country who were rescued. WBTV's Sarah Batista joins us live from the newsroom. Okay, Sarah, what more can you tell us? 
Well, this was a three-day operation to crack down on child sex trafficking. It's called Operation Cross Country, and the FBI says they targeted truck stops, casinos, and websites that advertise dating or escort, escort services based on intelligence information they had. That typically uncovers organized prostitution rings involving women and children. The local FBI office wouldn't elaborate on the arrests made here, but we do know three pimps were arrested and one child was rescued. FBI Special Agent Shonda Drummond investigates these cases, and she told me the average age of a child involved is about 12 years old. Parents can't be around all of the time, but we need to be checking on our children, checking their devices, looking, asking questions so that we're aware of what they're accessing, who they're talking to, and what they're getting involved in. And we're on your side learning more about the issue of human trafficking. Hear from a woman who was forced into prostitution and how she got out. That's coming up tonight at 7 on WBTV Primetime. We're live in the newsroom. Sarah Batista, WBTV, on your side. Well, Sarah, we look forward to that story. Thank you. To date, the FBI and its task force partners have rescued more than 2,700 kids from the streets. Now at 5.30, teachers in Burke County, among hundreds, expected to take part in tonight's Moral Monday protest at the state capitol. This is the 13th consecutive if week the protests are taking place. Teachers say they'll speak out about what they call the destruction of the state education system based on the budget passed last week. They held a rally before they left for Raleigh. Power and greed do not supersede our children. They do not supersede the promise of the American dream. This is expected to be the first Moral Monday protest where people march to the state capitol building. Several hundred people have been arrested in the first 12 protests. One of the top players for the UNC basketball team is suspended from the team. P.J. Hairston was cited for driving 93 miles an hour in a 65-mile zone on Sunday. He was on I-85 heading towards Charlotte. A report shows the car he used belongs to a female friend. The citation says Hairston was weaving in and out of traffic near Salisbury. This is not the first time this summer Hairston has been in trouble with the law. He was cited for traffic violations and marijuana possession, but those charges were later dropped. Next here at 5.30, an owner and bouncer at a bar in South Carolina allegedly stabbed by patrons. Plus, it's a touchy subject. Tonight, find out why doctors are being encouraged to talk about sex with heart attack patients. That's next. We continue to follow breaking news here on WBTV. Sky 3 has now gotten on the scene there in Cornelius where firefighters, as you can see, are scrambling right now, dealing with a gas line break. We were watching this just a moment ago in the commercial break, and you could see the venting coming out as the dirt was sort of flying, uh, as that gas apparently was escaping there from underground. Firefighters working by hand there to get to the root of this problem. Certainly an area you want to avoid right now. This is Catawba Road and Old Jatan in Cornelius right now. It looks like the traffic is being shut down in that area right now. Right now, as firefighters scramble to get a cap on this gas leak, as soon as we get more information, we'll have it for you right here on WBTV. Now at 5.30, a 79-year-old man is dead in a plane crash along the South Carolina coast this afternoon. Emergency officials in Georgetown County say John Prince Harris was flying from Charleston, West Virginia to visit his wife and other family members in Georgetown County. Firefighters say the plane was in flames when they arrived at the scene next to the runway at the county airport. No one else was on board. Police in Columbia, South Carolina are searching for two men allegedly kicked out of a bar who then returned to stab the owner and a bouncer. Detectives are releasing a surveillance photo of the two guys outside the bar, Green Therapy. This is from Sunday. Police say the two people stabbed should be okay. New information on this weekend's deadly bus crash in Indianapolis. It happened hundreds of miles away, but tonight we find out two of the victims spent part of their lives in South Carolina. Hear how a community is mourning their loss. And we do get a couple of days to dry things out behind this weekend's flooding. However, we're tracking two storm systems that could bring more rain back to an already too saturated area. I'll have more details coming up in your first alert forecast. But first, here's a look at some photos our viewers have submitted of flooding in areas to the west of Charlotte from over the weekend. Incredible shots here. Remember, you can always email us a picture to send it at WBTV.com. You can also tweet us. Our handle is at WBTV underscore news. We're back in a minute. 
We have new information tonight on a deadly church bus crash in Indianapolis. Three people died over the weekend, and tonight we've learned a youth pastor and his pregnant wife were among those killed. They attended college in Greenville, South Carolina. A spokesperson for Bob Jones University says youth pastor Chad Phelps and his wife Courtney attended the school. A pastor at a Greenville church says their families are using their faith to get them through the difficult situation. From family that's there and friends, uh, that are there. It was just a very bittersweet time. Uh, but again, you know, for, for folks that, that are in church and, and are people of faith, during times of difficulty and tragedy, you know, we just cling to truth. The driver of the bus tells investigators the brakes failed before the crash. We continue to follow breaking news here on WBTV Sky 3 Live in Cornelius, where you can see firefighters just a moment ago were digging furiously with shovels, have backed away a bit now from this scene. This is a gas leak. This is Catawba Road and Old Jaton. And you can see the pressure from that pipe below is shooting some debris into the air right now. Again, you can see some firefighters have backed up a little bit now as they continue to watch this situation. Uh, clearly, they're waiting probably for, for uh, other gas company, uh, et cetera, to get on the scene as well to try to get this under control. Firefighters standing back now on the sidewalk. Again, this is Catawba Road and Old Jatan outside a business park there. We're watching this story very closely. As soon as, again, we get new details about exactly what they're dealing with here. You can see a fire truck there at the top of your screen. We'll get you updated right here on WBTV. Keep you updated as well on WBTV. Dot com. Molly? And Jamie, resuming a normal life can be terrifying for heart attack survivors. Now, as Teresa Garcia reports, the American Heart Association wants cardiologists to tackle the sensitive subject of sex with their heart attack patients. Newlywed Derek Avdul and his wife Jean loved to After run. doctors gave Derek the all clear, more good news soon followed. My wife is expecting our first child. He says that's even more motivation to stay healthy. Teresa Garcia, CBS News, Santa Monica. Doctors advise cardiac patients to seek prompt medical attention if any physical activity ever causes chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, or abnormal heartbeats. Molly, I'm here now with meteorologist Ashley Betty in the First Alert Weather Center. Of course, weather continues to be the dominant story around here. Continue our coverage of the flooding that really began Saturday. And Ashley, we've had so much rain lately. Uh, check out the pictures here from Sky 3, the flooding in Gaston County along the South Fork River. This video taken just a short time ago. It's receded some, but you can still, it is still creeping across roads and into Yards, some of the flooding in Lowell yesterday as well. Uh, the question has become, because this has been a, a pattern we've been dealing with all summer long. What's going on? Why so much rain? Because this is normally a dry time of the year. This is one of the driest months we typically mm -hmm. see in a year. We tend to pick things back up into August and September, but June and especially July tend to be quite dry. However, what we've got is a pattern in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's more reminiscent of what we see in late winter. So mm -hmm. that's continuing to allow, basically when you see this U-shaped dip there, think right. of it as a low pressure system, sort of the counterpart in the upper levels. When you get low pressure, pressure, that's mm -hmm. when you have your better storm chances. And then on top of that, at the surface, well, then we had another cold front in this particular case mm -hmm. just to our west. So out ahead of it, we were ushering in more of that tropical air coming straight in from the Gulf of Mexico. So that was just adding to the problems all over again. And up and down the coast, they've been dealing with this uh, on this side of the country. I guess the question then becomes, we're so saturated. We know the river levels, the lake levels are so yep. high. Here we are coming towards the peak of hurricane season. Yep. What happens if... And that's, and that's when we start getting into August, September. That's why mm -hmm. our rainfall totals start to pick back up. And unfortunately, there's a good chance we may find out exactly what happens here mm -hmm. in the next week. What would happen with a tropical storm? And it doesn't even have to be necessarily a specific storm coming straight into the Carolinas. It doesn't have to be a Hugo. What it could be is just the remnants, what we're seeing right now. These are the remnants of Dorian moving up along the coast and then funneling in all of that tropical moisture. In that case, it's not out of the question to see another six, eight inches of rain falling in some areas. Obviously, if that were to happen, it'd be a devastating situation. We just cannot handle that much more rain. Now, in the meantime, we still have an active flood warning out for portions of Gaston County. This is along the South Fork River.